Good morning, Covenant Church. Oh, you guys are too kind. You're too kind. You're too kind. Come on, make some noise for Jesus in this place. Come on, you can do that. You can be seated. I want to take a moment to greet everybody that's watching online and, uh, and any of our first-time visitors. Uh, if you're here today, man, thanks for giving us a an hour of your time, maybe your friend tricks you into being here, told you he's going to take you to get some coffee. We got coffee in the lobby for you. And so uh, however however you ended up here, I don't think it's an accident that you're here. And uh, I believe that God has a message for each and every person under the sound of my voice. Pastor Stephen is at our Crossroads location. He said, Ryan, bring a word, okay? Just, just bring anything that's on your heart. And I said, I, I got a word, Pastor Stephen. I'm, I'll do my best. I'm going to be... Uh, talking from the book of Mark. For those of you who have no idea who Mark is, Mark joined the cause uh, of Jesus, became a disciple somewhere in the middle of his ministry and had a strong relationship with Peter. And so Peter is who gave Mark most of his stories. And Mark, uh, when he writes his gospel, he is trying to tell us that Jesus is God. Mark don't even got time for baby Jesus, okay? Like, he just went straight into it. Mark 1, verse 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And, and right away, um, in the first few chapters of Mark, Peter wants Mark to know, it's like, listen, if, if Jesus really is God, I gotta tell you some stories. And there is a story found in chapter 5 that I believe uh, the Lord wants to use this weekend to teach us something of value. Mark 5, verse 21 says this, and when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with them. And a great crowd followed him and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years and who had suffered much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, if I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. This morning, I want to speak to you on the subject of square squad, a square squad. Can we pray together? Father, I pray that in these next few moments, you would give us a divine revelation of who you are. We want to grow closer to you, Jesus, and we ask that you would reveal things to us about our lives that help us grow closer to you. In the matchless name of Jesus, all God's people gave a great amen, amen, amen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. You're my family, and so uh, I haven't put this on social media, okay? I haven't made this public, so keep this between us, okay? Online audience, you too, okay? Don't be tweeting my business out there in the streets, okay? Uh, here's, here's a little secret I got to let you know. Me and my wife are expecting our second child, okay? We, uh, we got another baby boy on the way, which means I got a point guard. Now I got a shooting guard coming down the line. Got my staff, got my clay. You got to have both. You know what I'm saying? Splash Brothers on the way. Uh, now, I got issues, y'all. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I got issues. When my wife told me she was pregnant, I was taking a shower, and she just slid the stick through the curtain, right? She just slid it in, right? And I looked at it. And you're not going to believe me when I tell you this, but my first thought was, how did this happen? I know how it happened, but I thought, who did this? You did this. And so I'm sitting there like, I'm like, so 
Um, and, and, and God's honest truth, this is what came out of my mouth. And I'm embarrassed to tell you this to, to my church, okay? This is exactly what I said. I said, uh, ooh, congratulations. She said, congratulations? What are you talking about? I'm like, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, oh. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm so happy for you. Happy for us. You going somewhere? I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm just... I'm just thrown off a little bit by, by the announcer, just trying to take a shower. Next thing you know, I'm about to have a kid. Do I got to get a new car, a new house? I'm trying to, our, our house fits three people. Does it fit four people? I don't know. I got issues, y'all. Uh, uh, and, and the reason I don't mind telling you that I got issues is because we all got issues. In fact, I want to do a little exercise. I want you to look at your neighbor on the right and say, neighbor, I got issues. Now, don't say, I know, okay? I didn't tell you to say that. You're like, I know, he ain't saying nothing new. Duh, hello. Now, look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I got issues too. We all got some issues in the building. And uh, what I love about this character that Peter is telling Mark about is she has an issue she's been dealing with for 12 years. She might have been dealing with your issue for 12 days, 12 months, 12 years, but most of our issues are private. Her issue is public. Everybody knows. In fact, this woman is known for her issue. When we get to heaven and Jesus says, hey, meet Jamie, we'd be like, who is Jamie? Be like the woman with the issue of blood. Like, oh, you, good to see you. <laughs> Isn't it sad when people know us by our issues and they don't even know our name? I, I wonder how many of, of us have done some things that have just made us feel identified, labeled by the things that we have done instead of who we, we really are. Her issue has caused significant issues for her in all facets of her life. It's, uh, Mark tells us that it's affected her pocketbook a little bit. Uh, Mark also didn't break down the Levitical law that would have made her get a divorce because uh, she was ceremonially unclean. And anybody that she interacted with, anybody that she touched, was also ceremonially unclean. There was a, a section in the temple courts that they call it the women's part of, of the temple courts. I like to call it the women's small group. She was no longer able to be a part of it. She couldn't even go to church and worship because of her issue. That was by law. Some of us by society just go, because of what I've done, I can't. So let's say we get up here and say, you know what you should think about doing this year? You should be a small group leader. You go, nah, not me. I got issues. We all got issues. But we, we have all of these things that keep us from entering into the house of God with confidence because we're going, as long as I did well this week, I feel like I'm good enough to be here. And there's some people that you've invited to church before that go because of the rules, go, ah, well. And some of us have had some marriage issues that says, man, I'm too embarrassed to come to church because what if people find out that I got issues? The good news, ladies and gentlemen, is we all are in the same issues boat because we all got them. Except this woman has spent all that she had trying to fix her issues. Mark tells us that she has seen many physicians. And in the process of her seeing many physicians, her condition got worse. Uh, early scholars and, and early rabbis would give out the uh, sort of concoctions that they would tell women that had an issue of blood. They would say, hey, go get the gum of Alexandria and put together this concoction. And then if that doesn't work, then go boil some Persian onions with some wine. And if you drink that, then all of a sudden, then if, and if that doesn't work, and they just kept sending this woman to place after place after place. And I believe that we live in a day and age now that when we have our issues, we go to certain places and they may not be doctors, Dr. Smith, but it might be Dr. Netflix. And we just think, all right, well, this, if I could just chill out for a little bit, then maybe after I'm done with season two, then maybe my issue will be gone. But then season two is over and you still the same. Matter of fact, you might be worse. Some of us go to Dr. Social Media and maybe get some likes and maybe I'll feel better about myself once I post this vacation. I can't even swim, but I'm posting the beach and hopefully. <laughs> but if they like the beach, then maybe they like me, but you come home and your issue remains. We, we all got issues and this woman has come to her end. She has run out of resources and I found that life often gets us to a place where we can either choose Jesus or need him. 
when we hit rock bottom. Uh, for those of you who aren't at rock bottom yet, please don't wait to get there when you can turn to Jesus right now. But for those of us that have had rock bottom moments, we, we know what it's like to be this woman to go, I've run out of options. So what am I going to do? This woman also ha has another problem. You see, Jesus is a very prestigious rabbi. A prestigious rabbi wouldn't even be seen in public speaking to a woman. And he cannot touch her because that would make him ceremonially unclean. This woman is very aware of the law. And she's studied it. She's been waiting for this moment for a long time. And so... She says, it says that she had heard reports of Jesus. Here's what she heard. Jesus can heal you one of two ways. One, he can speak the word and heal you with his mouth. All you got to do is say it. But that would require him talking to you, and he can't. Or he could lay his hands on you and you'd be healed. But he can't touch you because that would make him ceremonially unclean. So she's sitting, watching the crowd on the way to Jairus' house. She's going, does the law say anything about me touching the thing that's touching the man? No. So I wonder if I could just touch the hem of his garment, maybe I would be made whole. Um, at the end of, of his outer robe were, were these, these little, I call them trinkets, they're not trinkets, but they, they were symbolic of a man that was connected to the temple, that he had done all of the Jewish traditions, like that he was enough. And she grabbed the very thing that meant that she was on the in crowd. And she touched it. And Mark tells us she was made whole instantly. And Jesus said, who touched me? Everybody going, everybody touching you, Jesus. What you talking about? He goes, no, 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 no. There's a difference. Some people can touch me. But this woman did something extra. She stepped outside of her comfort zone and got something from me that everybody else around me isn't. Get it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to challenge you this year in 2019 to get rid of your cool. Because some of us, we go, oh, yeah, we cool when we worship, you know what I'm saying? We look good when I worship, you know? My shirt's so tight, I can't even go above my shoulders. So I'm going to just hit Jesus with it. <laughs> look good, you know what I mean? Feel good, you know? Don't want to get too uncomfortable. I don't want to lose it. You know, I drop to my knee. Oh, no, I don't want to look crazy, but. Sometimes you got to do something that might feel a little bit embarrassing to reach and to get something from God that you haven't gotten before. And this woman, she, she did that. And Jesus turned around. He said, man, something. And then he says something to this woman that changes the story altogether. He says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Let's just say he said, daughter, those words would have made her whole. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we started this story, she was a woman with the issue of blood. But by the time Jesus was done with her story, she was now a daughter of the Most High God. <laughs> daughter. He's not just healing her physically. He's going, I know what's been spoken over you for 12 years. And I got a new word for you. Daughter. Another way of saying it is belonging, accepted, loved, in, good enough. You belong here to me like I, you're mine. I wonder how many people needed just that today. To just know that you don't have to be known by your issue. That Jesus could, could all of a sudden give this woman a whole new reputation. Um, in fact, early Christians, first century Christians, they couldn't tell the Jesus story without this story. And some of them embellished it. They even gave her a name. Some called her name Berenice. Uh, some people called her Veronica. I like Veronica. Okay, so, so they said in front of Veronica's house, they built a statue of her kneeling before the Savior and, and him healing her. Um, some say that mysteriously a plant grew around the statue and people would walk by it and touch it and they would get healed just from the plant. We don't know for sure. We don't, we don't know her name, but we do know her impact. And her impact is found not in Mark 5, but in Mark 6. And it says in Mark 6, verse 56, and wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. 
this woman has changed the ministry of Jesus altogether. Listen, before that, it was like, hey, he got he to talk to you or he got he to lay hands on you. Not no more. Jesus started off a message. Blessed are the, they be like, Jesus, Jesus, just wear long clothes, okay? Listen, her faith has started trending on Twitter. Hashtag touch the hymn. I mean, people are going crazy, okay? They're like, we got to get Jesus to wear his good robe, okay? And as long as he wears that robe, then we all are good. That's her reputation now. Isn't it amazing what God can do with our reputation? All of us, some of us feel like we're damaged goods. It's over. Says who? Might I suggest handing your life over to Jesus and seeing what he could do with your quote-unquote reputation. And, and I love it because her story is actually an interruption of somebody else's story. It says this. It says, while he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house some who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. I mean, you got you to see what's happening here. Jairus, ruler in the synagogue. Jesus, my daughter's dying. Can you help me out? 911. Oh, yeah, no problem. Let's go. Come on, man. Let's rise. Let's go. All right, man, we got the mob going with us. All right, man, it's a crowd. It's a crowd. And all of a sudden, Veronica dives into the crowd and, and steals a little bit of Jesus' time. You just know Jairus behind Jesus is like, can you hurry up? I mean, I know you've been bleeding for like 12 years, but my daughter about to die. So, Jesus, please, could you just, could you just please? Like, okay, is she done? She good? Daughter, cool, cool, cool. Let's go, let's go. It's too late. You ever had to watch God answer somebody else's prayer while yours stayed unanswered? And you're going, God, you know how faithful I'm? Veronica should have gotten lying. Like, she should have asked you first. I asked you, and now my, my daughter, is that you mean she got married? She ain't even saved. How'd she get married before me? What are we talking about, Jesus? You promoted him? The drug thing, they're gonna get how he getting how he getting blessed. I'm tired. What? Jesus says, hey man, don't fear. Only believe. What would you do if I told you I got both of your situations in the palm of my hand? And he says, and he allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, the sleeper. And they laughed at him. Don't you ever laugh at Jesus? <laughs> but he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately, the girl got up and began walking, for she was 12 years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one should know this. And they watched this and told them to give her something to eat. Oh, don't you love Jesus? Talitha kumi! You think she like ham and cheese? What you think she needs? She, she, she got to feed the girl now. Come on now. The girl's starving. She's been sleeping for forever. Come on, help her out. Give her a sandwich, y'all. Jesus thinks of everything. Don't you love Jesus? Uh, upon further review of the text, um, I was waiting for Jesus to bust through the door and to heal this girl. But people said, hey, she's dead. According to their opinion, Jesus walks in and says, your opinion is your opinion, but in my opinion, she's not dead. She just sleeping. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't see, might I suggest something for you this weekend? Some of you are here today going, I need a miracle. What would you do if I told you that maybe you don't need a miracle? Maybe you just need a second opinion. Some people are under the notion that they're going, they have looked at their situation and thought, my purpose 
is dead. It's over because of my issues. That's one person's opinion. Might I offer you a second one? Maybe your purpose isn't dead. Maybe it's just sleep. Some people have looked at their, their marriage or, or going on their second and going, man, <laughs> man, all, all the issues, man, they're, they're piling up, man. And might I suggest that you need a second opinion? I wonder if you would allow God's opinion to affect you more than what other people have told you already. I am a firm believer that we are the sum total of the opinions we've been believing our entire lives. What was spoken over you that you have attached yourself to for a lifetime? That you, I am this label, I grew up with a single mom, okay, I'm divorced, okay, I filed for bankruptcy. What is this label? And would you allow Jesus to come in and clear the room? Because there is weeping and a commotion. Jesus comes in, hey, 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 listen, I ain't even bring all my disciples in here because some of them are a little crazy. I brought just three of them, okay? Because I wanted to bring people in the room that were going to feed the faith of Jairus, not destroy it. One of my favorite authors is Brene Brown, and she has this process called developing your square squad. Square squad. Here's how it works. She writes, you should take out a one inch by one inch square card. And what, what you do with it is you write down the names of the people's opinion you want to matter the most. And it's a one inch by one inch card because it forces you to edit. Because knowing you, you, you pull out a whole journal and write down all these people saying, no, 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 no. Square squad. And you call these people and you say, hey, you made my square squad. And again, it ain't no offense if you're not on my square squad. But here's, uh, we, we keep throwing around these terms. Um, I don't care what people think. The person that's telling you they don't care what people think thinks, cares about what people think the most, okay? Like that's often, but they're, they're giving themselves a pep talk, okay? It's not saying because you're not on my square squad, I, I, I don't care what you think. No, 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 no. It just means that I take what you think to my square squad and they either verify it or say, no, you're okay. Your square squad reminds you who you are. Your square squad reminds you that you're a daughter of the Most High. A square squad reminds you that you are a son. A square squad feeds your faith. So today, on your way out, we're giving you each one of these. A one inch by one inch square. Now maybe you put your wife in this corner, okay? Now some of you got some Wakanda names. It's not gonna fit on this, okay? I'm just letting you know right now. Oh, but you're, no, 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 you're gonna need initials, okay? You're gonna need initials. Do initials, JS, that's all you need. Just write a JS, we know who it is, okay? But, but for the rest of us, Sarah, you can fit, okay? So choose wisely, okay? Like if they got one of them long, don't, don't do middle names, you're wasting space. It's one inch by one inch, ladies and gentlemen. But you wanna pick people that don't kiss up to you. You wanna pick people that can tell you the truth. So if someone at your job tells you you got attitude, like I ain't got no attitude. Are you sure you ain't got no attitude? You sure? You positive? Listen, they, they might be right, but hey, I'm giving you permission to be on my team, to support my faith. And when I have listened to an opinion that is not congruent with what God has said about me, would you remind me of who I am? Uh, I, there is a, 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 a statement going around that's gone around for years. Surround yourself with good people. It's great advice. It's not that practical. You don't get to pick your family. Like, you were just born into it. Like, you're stuck with them, okay? Like, often, most of us don't get to pick who we work with. Like, that's who just works there. We all, the thing we have in common is a paycheck, okay? Nevertheless, whether they're good or not, we don't often get to choose. I wish there was goodpeople.com. We could all just go, yeah, I'm going to watch the game today with good people. Like, that's just not how it works. And I wish it was, but it's like, Surround yourself with good people. Where are they? Like, how am I supposed to find these people? What am I supposed to go up and down these aisles and say, hey, are you watching the game? Like, like, how is that supposed to work? And it would be ideal if we could surround ourselves with faith people, but we can't often control that. But I can't control if I am a faith person. Because I've heard this in business and in leadership, so funny. They'll say, hey, as a leader, you never want to be the smartest person in the room. Well, somebody in the room going to have to be the dumbest person. Like, like, like what, what, what does that mean? It's going to be me. Some people are like, man, I want to surround myself with people that have a stronger faith than me. 
Well, what does that mean for the person with stronger faith? He going to surround himself with somebody with weaker faith? He would never say that. You know what I mean? It's like, how in the world are we going to do? You can't control what other people do. But I can wake up in the morning and go, I'm going to be the faith person. I'm not looking for somebody to come save me to be the thing. I know God has already called me to be. So I hope I'm on somebody's square squad. Not so much putting on so much pressure on, okay, well, who am I going to surround myself with when I know who I am called to be? The worship team can make their way back up. This past Tuesday, um, I had the opportunity to speak at a prison in, in Illinois. And it, it was the first time I ever, ever spoke in a prison. And uh, the inmates knew who I was. Uh, some of my sermons had been played in their chapel services for about a year. And uh, one of the wives actually requested for me to come. And I didn't even know I could. I was like, oh, my gosh, I would, I would love to go. And so a word got around prison last week that I was coming. So they started inviting their friends, right? They're like, hey, you got to go to chapel. This guy named Ryan Leake's coming. I'm like, oh, boy, I don't know what that means. You know, I'm, I'm a little nervous. And there's all these rules and regulations to go into the prison. You can't bring in nothing but your license. They say, hey, if you wear your Apple Watch in prison, it's one year in prison for you. I said, hey, you can have a watch. I'll buy another one. You know? <laughs> Ain't that serious. I don't need What time is it? Who cares? I don't care. You know, I was like, <laughs> one of the rules they put on there is no hugs. I said, you ain't got to tell me that. What, 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 what are you saying? <laughs> Hello? You should just write duh on the sheet. What you talking about? So one of the first time visitors came, all right? Like, like I, I treated it just like a regular church. I said, Ray, raise your hand for your first time. Okay, like the whole thing. One of the first time visitors walked in, walked in. And I, let's say I'm, I'm standing right there. He walked in, he said, it better be good tonight. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Wow. Better be good. People are like, you ever get nervous when you speak Tuesday night? I was super nervous <laughs> for a whole different reason. So I'm shaking people's hands at the door. They're like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, I can't believe you can. I can't believe you I'm like, oh, yeah, ain't no problem, ain't no problem, ain't no problem. All of a sudden, a guy came in, and he went for a hug. Y'all, I started speaking in tongues. I did everything. I was like, just shit. I'm about, hey, 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 hey. So I'm standing like this. Like, I'm like, boy, like, <laughs> I swear I froze. I'm like, hey, man, know you like that? This is what he says. This is what he says. I ain't lying. This is exactly what he said. He goes, do you want to know what's going to happen to you tonight? I said, what? What'd you say? What? He said, do you want to know what's going to happen to you tonight if you don't bring the heat? I said, um, I, 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 what, what, what do you mean? He goes, do you want to know what's going to happen to you tonight if you don't bring the fire? We're going to keep you here. <laughs> Y'all, I grabbed that mic. I said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Look at your neighbor and say it's not G-O-D, it's Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah, Jeremiah, provider. He sent his one and only son to the planet. And on the third day, I was like, hey, hey, <laughs> I had to get out. <laughs> hey, I had to make it out. Homie walked by me at the end, he said, Pretty good. We'll let you guys say, thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! When I was done speaking, I had 20 minutes left, and I said, hey, I'd love to, I'd love to just leave it open for, for Q&A, any questions you had. And, and ladies and gentlemen, their questions changed my life. And uh, you realize uh, how important that ministry is. One of the guys, he, he stood up. And he said, hey, man, great, great job tonight. But man, my question is this. We're incarcerated, man. He's addressing the elephant in the room. And he, he said, it, it's, we're not going anywhere. How are we supposed to have purpose? I mean, like, really? Like, like, how is it that God has a plan for me in here? And I thought a real question deserved a real answer. I said, man, it's a great question, and it's an honest question. And I said, that's one way of framing it. That's one opinion. Can I give you a second one? Did you know that two-thirds of the New Testament was written from 
I spoke on Moses that night. I said, you know Moses is an ex-murderer, right? Yet God decided to use him anyways. If I could tell them that, what issue do you have that you think would disqualify you from being used by God? May I offer you a second opinion today? That perhaps however you have viewed your life up until this point, however you have viewed your career or, or viewed your marriage or viewed your identity, would you ask the Lord this week, what do you think? What do you think about? What's your perspective on this situation? What's your perspective on this person? Maybe you've been taught to not like somebody because other people didn't like them. Well, there's, there's this term that we, we throw around like, man, I want friends that are ride or die. Ride or die, homie. Ride or die. Why don't we stop going places where we could get shot, you know? Like, what about ride or lunch, you know? Like, ride or movies, you know? Like, why is it that I'm either with you or we're going to die together? I got a family. We're not dying together. You're dying by yourself. You either with or no, no, Why not teach you to forgive this dude that's trying to shoot you? What are you talking about? We don't like her. We, I, you, who, you, you can't vote for me. Why don't we try and forgive them together? Why don't we try and love these people together? Who, who is shaping your life? What opinion has been directing your life, might I suggest that Jesus is the best one for you. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to give each and every person an opportunity to surrender their life to Jesus. You might be like the woman with the issue of blood. Our friend, maybe her name is Veronica, who ran out of options, hit rock bottom, and reached out to Jesus. You have the exact same opportunity today. If that's you today, you say, man, I want to surrender my life to Christ. Maybe you say, hey, I want to rededicate my life to Christ and you, I've, I've walked away from the faith and, and today I want to come back. Whether it is your first time, your second time, your third time, know that right now is the perfect time to surrender your life to Jesus. With no one looking around, if that's you today, you say, I want to surrender my life to Christ. Would you just slip up your hand and say, Ryan, that's me. I see your hand. That's awesome. I see your hand back there. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. There are hands all over. Can we all say this prayer together? Say, Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I ask now that you would be the Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me for all the mistakes I made. And your blood gives me a fresh start. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, all God's people said amen, amen, amen. Come on, could you make some noise?